is going on you guys it's your boy white album here welcome back to some more witch on the holy night last time we left off uh we were in quite a bit of a pickle because we were getting all the bad endings because we didn't have enough of the uh evidence to you know deduce who the killer is so i kind of went back and i kind of followed the guide uh to you know basically following all the correct choices you need to make in order to get the true ending uh it was kind of cool because i seen you know some stuff that i definitely missed uh one of them being toko you actually do meet toko very early on in the story uh, uh kumari actually gets to meet her which is pretty sick which makes sense as to when we see her and uh, it kind of deduces how we know she's actually the first one to die instead of uh tokisu so it's kind of cool seeing like some of the different things that i, I kind of missed out from uh from just picking different choices so we basically i just replayed the entire story again picking the right choices uh, but I did leave off on the decision S, which is finding out what time um, uh, Toko died. Uh, so we're just going to continue off from there. And then that's going to be the first half of this uh, video because I'm doing this a little bit different. So I'm going for the true ending and then I'm going to be going for all of the bad endings. So the first part or the first half of the video is going to be me going for the true ending. Then the uh, second half of the video is going to be me it's going to be like a small little compilation of me going for all the bad endings so let's do it man let's do it and i kind of called with one of the suspects too so let's uh let's go uh so bookmark here we go all right let's do this let's do this enter the block scene that's fine man we got the power of obs so also, if you're gonna if you see me looking off to the side here a lot, it's because I'm actually looking at a guide, especially when I'm gonna be doing all the bad endings. So here we go. So we actually we we actually were correct um originally the first time around how it was uh between the times of 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. So we're gonna go off of that. So here we go. I think oh it also makes sense as to why Aoko, when we meet her, she acts kind of like suspect. Is because she knew that Toko was there the whole time and died and didn't say a word. Oh, here we go. Ah, so can't think of it. All right, so Toko has, has to be the first, uh, first, right? Otherwise, Ozaki wouldn't have acted so weird. Ozaki was in the morning at the market. Ozaki was in the market at the market. Ozaki was Ozaki was out shopping all morning. Her big sister must have been killed sometime after she left, but before she brought you all here and went back into her room. Also, looking back at it, it's kind of, I don't understand how this makes sense considering who the, uh, who the culprit really is, or who, active, who activated the point, and I, I was actually kind of right when I realized who it was, too, so. I passed Ozaki in the hallway around, uh, on the second floor around 3.30. Toka must have been drowning herself in oldies right around then. Well... Until we can come up with any real conclusions, this has all just been speculation. I think the real problem is fig it isn't figuring out when the murder was committed, but how. It takes a serious sense of humor to make someone like Mr. Yamashiro and Father Eri to laugh out loud. Other factors like time frame being equal, just having a sense of humor excludes some people right off the bat, like Sojuro, Beo, and Konomi. Tsukiji has latched onto something big. Why hadn't anyone else thought of that? Hosuke's jokes made, everybody, uh, made people cringe. Bale didn't even understand the concept of humor. As for Suzuki, I bet planks of wood that get jokes quicker. 
Yeah, we know how that ended. <laughs> we know exactly how that ended. <laughs> Ooh, this is a bit different. If I remember correctly, I think this is a bit different because again, I followed all of the correct uh, decisions, all the right steps. So uh, some of the scenes are definitely changed up a bit from what I was like reading. Our discussion carried on until nearly 3 a.m. I yawned. I was by no means relaxed, just exhausted. After everything that's happened, I'd be surprised if anyone had any real energy left. Mm, it's late. We should probably get some sleep. Are you gonna rest? I can crash on the sofa just to be safe. He was clearly on guard for sweethearts disguised as Azaki, or someone else. I yawned again. Alright, this is okay, so this is the correct decision. As long as I lock the door, uh, but I won't be able to sleep. Well, we've, been, we've made it this far. Only a little longer to go. You know, Tsukiji, you're the one who said not to trust anybody. Oh, yeah. I'm a suspect, too. I guess I don't need to worry about you, huh? Tsukiji turned to the door, ready to leave. I tried to say something. The, the, this doesn't have anything to do with anything, but... Even though it's been, you know, a rough day, you seem... I don't know... content? What the hell was I saying? I was just embarrassing myself. <laughs> People died and I almost joined them. Rough day is putting it lightly. Luckily, he took my question seriously. <laughs> but I guess, in a way, it's been kind of fun. You feel the same, don't you, Kumari? His considerate reply was so reassuring, I almost forgot my anxiety. Not to surprise, I thought you looked down on this sort of thing. Well, you were wrong then. I love this kind of chaos. I don't want to take life too seriously. <laughs> For real? <laughs> well, you just blew my mind. I was being serious. It reminded me of the time I first realized that I'd fallen for him. Tsukiji was an amazing person, but he was squandering his potential. He didn't want glory or to move up in the world. It felt like such a waste of human capital. I could never do that. How long had I been watching him, wanting to kick his butt into gear? Look, I know this isn't, this probably isn't the time. But you're not exactly a people person sometimes, and yet you talk to me. Why is that? Hmm? I realize I could just skip this to the next decision, but Hmm? Well, you've worked your ass off for six years without relying once on your parents, teachers, or anyone else. Anyway, I'll catch you in the morning down in the foyer. And with that, the room went quiet again. For some reason, I felt a tight squeezing sensation in my chest. In a way, it's been kind of fun. You feel the same, don't you, Kumari? 
Tsukiji's words replayed themselves over and over in my head. Yeah, he was right. Maybe it had been fun. Okay, here we go. Here we go. This is where I basically got put in the infinite loop of uh, of uh, bad decisions or bad endings. <laughs> I woke up to the sound of birds chirping. Ugh, it's morning. The clock read half past five. The sun was beginning to peek over the horizon. My ability to rise early was one of my few strong points, so I must have been really exhausted. I foggily examined my wrinkled clothes in the mirror. My body was still asleep. I was too tired to even make tea, so I just grabbed my wallet and card case off the table. Yeah, that's when we saw, if you picked the other decision, we saw fucking Aoko in, a, in like a Playboy bunny outfit, which is crazy. The case contained my computer pass and some pictures I took each year. Are they going to show it? Yeah, there it is. <laughs> we'll show it off once again. I always find it weird that they, that they always wear the cufflinks, like, even though you're not wearing a shirt. Had a rare shot of Ozaki making a fool of herself at this year's school festival. She either drank champagne thinking it was a soft drink, or someone slipped alcohol into the juice cocktail. Next thing I knew, she was all hyper, yelling about wearing someone else's clothes. I got a great shot of her with my disposable camera. Yeah, that talks about the times, man. Disposable camera? <laughs> uh, not to make myself sound old, but I grew up with those. I mean, they're still around, but, you know... Like, digital was, wasn't the thing, wasn't that big of a thing yet in, like, the early 2000s. And I was just, I was still, like, a kid at that point. I love that photo so much I carried with me in my car case everywhere I go. Whenever I fell down, it always cheered me up to look at it and remember how adorable Ozaki could be. It was a side of herself that nobody who knew her would ever expect. Especially her comedic side. What? Huh? Wait a second. Did I just think something I really shouldn't have? That would be incredibly bad to bring up now. Ooh. Okay, now it makes sense as to why. Okay. Okay, when we get to the culprits or the suspects, I'm gonna I'm gonna deduce how I uh well when we get to the uh what's it called? To the characters. So da Alright. Where is everyone? I rocked through my overnight bag to see if anything might be of use. Okay, and then we brought the walk and the cleaver. Turns out, the stuff I brought to cook was was worth bringing. I hovered over the walk, or the cleaver, ultimately deciding to take the walk with me. I went out into the hallway. There was something cooler than inside the guest room. Silence had fallen over the mansion once again. There was no sound, no sign of life. It was like the storm never happened. Tsukiji's room was empty. Suzuki wasn't in Father Eri's room. Nobody was in Rasuka's room either. Miss Kuonji? I called out into the void of the West Wing, but got no response. I was alone. I headed down to the basement where Ozaki was confided or confined. Down a narrow staircase to a door. The padlock had been broken clean off from the outside. Aozaki. I braced myself for whatever was to come and opened the door. Inside the tiny cellar, I saw a dead body lying face down. The beautiful long hair was all I needed to know it was Aozaki. She wasn't breathing. She scrawled something with her left hand in her last moments. It was a dying message, written in blood. I could feel the disdain in the words. <laughs> Told you so. <laughs> well, you sure did. Ozaki wasn't the killer. It wasn't clear when she was murdered. But whoever the killer was broke the lock, made her laugh, and nonchalantly went upstairs and... Basically got everybody else. Quit running. <laughs> I tried to control my breathing, and my mind was racing. Everyone was dead. Everyone was dead. Probably, only the killer and I were left. But the sun was already up. 
Wait, not completely. If the rule said it ended in the morning, then the game wasn't over yet. I have to get out of here now and figure out who the killer is. There was no winning this unless I did something. Everyone is dead. No turning back now. I. Okay, so, as you know, with Decision U, if you keep running, you die. So we now this time, again, in my last video, I kind of figure out who the killer was. Obviously, when we pick the... Uh, obviously, it's Sojiro. We know it was Sojiro who's the killer. So we're just going to pick Sojiro right off the bat. Calm down. Everything should be in order. I tried... I tried controlling my breathing and began to organize the facts in my head. I didn't have a decisive answer to the killer's motives, method, or identity. There was only one thing I knew for sure. Tsukiji has said it many times. It's not about who committed the murders, but who rather, but rather who could have committed the murders. The first murder, Tokisu's capture and death by explosion. We excluded the following suspects. Me, Miss Kuonji, Tsukiji, Hosuke, Father Eri, and Sister Yuka. The second murder, Miss Yamashiro's fabulous funeral. Impossible to rule out any suspects. At a stretch, we could maybe exclude Miss Kuonji. We don't know when Mr. Yamashiro was killed, because we were all looking around after Tokisu's murder. It's unlikely the murder was committed within the 10 minute gap, but we couldn't rule it out completely. The third murder, Hosuke and Riddell, or Riddle. Who cares? I love that shit, who cares? <laughs> the fourth murder, Bayo. It couldn't have been me because I didn't search for Alzaki's sister. Neither could have been, neither, wait, neither could have been Tsukiji, Suzuki, or Ritsuka. The fifth murder. What? The fifth murder. Father Ares Webb. We were in the foyer, so we couldn't, it couldn't have, uh, what? It couldn't be me, Tsukiji, Ritsuka, or Miss Kulonji. The sixth murder. The Yuka statue. This one didn't matter either. The seventh murder. The elder sister's death by alcohol poisoning. This might actually have been the first murder in the timeline. We could exclude maybe only Miss Kulonji, barely. That's everything I knew. Now it came down to the simple process of elimination. Who was the invisible killer who made everyone laugh? I think the killer must be Decision V. Okay, so again, we already know it's Sojiro. It was pretty obvious when we actually did it the first time. So we're going to pick Sojiro. It was Suzuki. Oh, okay, now it's different. Now it's different. Hold on. Hold on. Wipe my nose here. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't. I think I'm getting sick. Hopefully not. Um, it was Suzuki. If the facts were pointed to anyone, it was him. Okay, so this is completely different than the last time because before it'd be like we don't have enough evidence. He knew this mansion inside and out. He'd been helping out with the birthday party, so he could have moved about freely without raising suspicion. But the biggest piece of evidence was the glaring discrepancy between his and Miss Kuwonji's alibis. Suzuki said he was in the mansion in the morning. However, that's not what his landlady said. She said that no one was around to help, so she locked the place up herself. If she did that on a regular basis, she wouldn't have bothered to mention that. Miss Kuwonji wanted either Suzuki or Alzaki to lock the, uh, to lock the doors. Alzaki said she was in the town that morning. That's likely why her sister was able to enter her room. Suzuki lied about being at the mansion at the time. Not the strongest case, I know. But that's all I've got to go on. I felt there was more I could pin on him, but I wasn't sure what, uh, what right now. I had to find Suzuki uh, before morning, before... Before uh, someone was behind me. Damn, she fucking... <laughs> She fucking thwacked him with the walk. That's crazy. So you're the killer, Suzuki. <laughs> Eat this. I took up my trusty walk and swung in and swung it as hard as I could before he could lay a hand on me. It connected hard, harder than it should have. Suzuki, I only saw him briefly, but I knew it was him. He collapsed to the ground and a strange item tumbled onto the floor. It was that, and again, we, I, I, again, I should have known it was Suzuki, uh, Suzuki, Suzuki, when we first saw that uh, one bad ending. 
It was the kind of cheap fake glasses and nose you'd find in any, uh, in any bag of party favors. So, so <laughs> Who would actually laugh at this? Well, technically you did. The only ones who would were Miss Kuonji, who didn't get out much, and Aozaki, who thought so much of Suzuki. Whatever. I started running. As long as I guessed the killer correctly, I'd be in the game. But maybe Suzuki would recover and come after me. I decided to escape to the foyer. If I could make it to the forest outside, I'd win. It had to be morning by now. Huh? It was still dark outside. What? How? How was it still dark outside? Excellent work, I must say. Huh? A resentful female voice croaked from the foyer. Wait, female? But who was it? I thought Suzuki was the killer. Run. Just run. Run! I was confused, but I could still run. I tripped and fell. As I stood up, I tried to take a second to think. I was mistaken. The game was still on. If that was true, then Sweetsarts had won. Suzuki was the killer. I was sure of it. I said it out loud, and I was still alive, wasn't I? Remember the rules. If you accuse someone and you're wrong, you die. As long as I'm still alive, Suzuki had to be the killer. Was I wrong? Was I missing something? My guess about the killer. It must have been a hint. Think, think. How did things come to this? I heard footsteps getting louder. Morning was almost here. This was my last and only chance. I. Okay, decision W is. Okay, so this one, we got, we have to choose. Are there two types of murders? Yes. So this is what we have to choose. There had to be two. Yeah. Two. It was impossible to explain some things if there was only one method. But what if there were two? First, to consider the nature of the murders. They could have been divided up into the times the killers made the victim laugh and times when the victim saw a dead body and laughed. Kosuke, Riddle, and Sister Yuka fell under the latter self-destructive category, but it might have been applied to another victim too. Bayo. Bayo died outside in the sunroom after he laughed, but there was nothing in the sunroom that could have made him laugh. It was unlikely anything had been set up in the forest, not when the weather was so bad. So, the trap must have been laid inside, but not in the sunroom. What about above the sunroom, on the second floor? Alzaki's bedroom was directly above the sunroom. Maybe somebody, or someone had asked Bayo to look into Alzaki's room from the outside, and then Bayo had seen something. Toko, out of her mind, dead drunk. Bayo knew Toko well. And there was definitely a chance he'd laugh if he saw her like that. I mean, I laughed, bro. <laughs> Poor girl. <laughs> It was in, what, indigent, uh, in, oh, it was ingenious as traps, I almost said indigenous, that's a completely different fucking thing. Ingenious as traps went, what the hell? Either way, even if he didn't laugh, the person who asked him simply told him to check, so they wouldn't seem suspicious. It would only make people suspect Aozaki sooner. So, there are two MOs. A direct method and a secondary method that uses the victims. Okay, so I'm assuming the direct method is Suzuki, uh, the, like directly killing people. Similarly, simil, sim, 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 yeah. There were two killers. Riddle's suggestions, Tsukiji's suspicions. Teams of two, intimate betrayal, two minds. One body. Sweet's hearts. The prayer Poi Kekshaw. In retrospect, it was such a revealing name. If Sweet referred to the pudding body, then what about heart? 
Humans. The enemy can take on multiple forms. That meant there were two sweethearts. In this game, the killer and prime suspect had to be separate people. The prime suspect used a ploy, while their accomplice carried out the killings. Suzuki merely played the role of the suspect. I guess correctly, but I haven't seen the full I hadn't seen the full picture. That must be why I hadn't I wasn't out of the woods yet, so to speak. Figuratively and literally. Wait, hold on. Wait one stir fried second. The answer is obvious. Now, I just need to solve one problem. I. This is next. Okay, who could activate a ploy? This is who we have to uh, pick for the good ending. Or the true ending. Only one of them could have caused this to happen. I considered who could have activated the ploys. Boonji locked it, scattered invitations, who to trust, three day weekend party, the first one is wrong. The first one is wrong. Right. Our prime suspect was decision Y. Now this is where it gets interesting because I kind of called this originally when we were trying to find out who the killer was. And before it was Sazaki, if you remember, I recalled that it was Kumari. And that is correct. The Kumari was the one who activated the ploys. And the way I think this happened, okay, so if you remember when we first go into the mansion, she goes to her room and she takes a quick nap. What I think happened in that quick nap is that maybe I don't okay, I, they're probably gonna explain it here as to how everything happened, but I think it's like that quick nap is what somewhat activated the ploy. Uh, how she got the ploy in her hands is unknown. I'm pretty sure they're going to reveal that. But I, that that first like nap that she took is what activated this entire storyline. So here we go. It is the homegirl Kumari. I, I fucking I called and I called that too because I remember I said if it was like a it'd be crazy like a like a sort of a plot twist if it was her the entire time. I kind of said the same thing about Tokisu how it would be crazy if it was him. Like, he'd be, like, the biggest plot twist, but no, it was actually Kumari the entire time. I thought that was actually pretty sick. I, I, I'm kind of glad I called it, too. So, I, I kind of deduced that the first time around. So, here we go. Because remember... Oh, okay, and then we have to pick number three. Because remember, man... Never trust anybody. Never, even yourself, you know? Not even Squidward's house. <laughs> was there a simpler explanation? Decision Z. I'm sure now, because everything happened the way I decided it should. That's the correct one. It's... It's me. It can only be. The fact that everything had gone just the way I thought was proof above that I was Sweetshearts. At Sweetshearts, I couldn't remember anything, anything that worked against me. I had to look at this objectively. Who activated the ploy kickstrom on the day of the party? The answer was no one. Ooh, okay. Miss Kawaji personally locked the room where she stored her ploys. No one could possibly break inside. Okay, so ooh, it must have like a like a subconscious type of activation. But it was her because again, she took that that she was like the only one who actually went to like who actually took like a small break before actually meeting everybody. As long as there wasn't any special tricks, we could eliminate that possibility entirely. It was only logical. Therefore, if someone took the ploy, they'd have to have done it before today. Ooh, okay. Interesting. How does that work? Because I don't think it... Because Kumari's actually never been to the mansion before. Maybe they did explain that. Maybe they said that she was, but I don't think so. Huh. Okay. They would have broken in before she locked the vault. Only someone who had accidentally come on the first day of the long weekend would have would have had the opportunity. So, why did they come on the first day by mistake? Simple. The invitation itself was wrong. Okay. A birthday party will be held at the start of the long weekend. 
The blockhead who wrote that on the invitations, Suzuki, I'm assuming, or Al no, because Alzaki was the one that sent that to her. Sent them out to three people total. Oh no, it was Suzuki. Of those people, Toko Alzaki probably had it had it all figured out, but she left as something she wasn't expecting, so that took care of her. Then there was Mr. Yamashiro. He said that he got his invitation that morning. Everyone else received theirs before that. It was highly likely it was delivered directly to his mailbox instead of being mailed. If Suzuki was working with the prime suspect, then they likely edited the, edited the invitation. Suzuki became an accomplice on the first day, and then invited Mr. Yamashiro on the morning of the second day. This was to hide the fact that the prime suspect was accidentally invited on the first day. Mr. Yamashiro wasn't just invited to be killed, but, but to act as an alibi for the culprit. Then, there was me. I was sure the party would have been on the first day on the long weekend. Based on all the information, the only people who would have activated the ploy were me and Suzuki. So, so what they're saying, what she's saying is that, okay, so they just said it right here. I can only imagine that kind of hospitality he must have offered Kojika Kumari for suddenly showing up on the wrong day. Yeah, so she she showed up like a day earlier and he probably showed her around. And then they probably, went, for some reason, Suzuki showed her the vault that, that held the ploys and she probably picked up Sweethearts by accident. And then that's why, you know, she probably doesn't remember because I think, like, if you, I think the, I think it said that the ploy is like an exact replica, replica of the person, so they have like all their memories, and then obviously they're not going to know that they are sweethearts. But it wasn't unreasonable that he put out tea and snacks for a fellow schoolmate. The problem is, where did Suzuki obtain those snacks from? Ah, What is this alpha they're about to have her in, dude? Please keep it PG, Nasu. That's all I'm saying. You already had Aoko in a fucking Playboy Bunny outfit. Okay, here we go. <laughs> ah, well, you figured it out, huh? Oh, so close to winning, too. This girl's smarter than I thought. Well, technically, you are her, so. And just then, from the mansion, another me appeared from the mansion. The one. The one who had been Suzuki, what? From the mansion, the one who had been Suzuki chasing me. What the fuck? Okay, that's a weird saying. Bro, what is this F go gotcha type fucking outfit that got her wearing, dude? <laughs> that is a crazy ass outfit, dude. Are you sweethearts? I got up off my knees to face my other self. She nodded yes, admitting defeat. You're sweethearts too, though. I was disguised as him. You were disguised as her. What? Okay, so this version of Kumari... Yeah, because it could change into different people, right? So it changed... It disguised as Suzuki while... Kumari herself was the real ploy? Okay. But you're exactly the same Kojika Kumari. So I'm the only one with any memory of being sweethearts. Hmm. Is that so? Well, it's time for us to go. Game over. The sun's almost up. It's also crazy that she's gonna not remember this because I believe it said that once you beat Sweet's Hearts, everybody's memories are just like basically faded away or like reset. So they don't remember the game at all. Are you sure you want the game to end? You're about to win. Don't you want your prize? My what? I didn't know there was a prize involved. Kumari 
Oh, okay. I'm I'm talking about what Kojika Kumari wished for and was worried about when she ate me. So wait, what? Hold on. So <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> Voice got a little raspy there. So when she showed up on the wrong day. Suzuki gave her tea and some snacks, but one of the snacks was Sweets Hearts. Did they ever describe what Sweets Hearts was? Because it would make sense if it was like a chocolate or like a little like wafer snack cookie type thing. Why Sojiro would give that to her, I have no clue. Maybe he went into the vault thinking it would. No, because he's been with. He's been living with Alko and Alice for like a while now, so he wouldn't know what maybe some of the ploys would look like. Hopefully they explain it here, because that's kind of... Also, is her hair lighter than that? Yeah, her like Sweetheart's version. The hair is like a little lighter in color. Um, Worried about when she ate me, meaning that it's the ploy is like a food? It wouldn't okay. I think it would make sense if it was like a like a like think of it like a like a box of chocolates. This is just me speculating or just like just coming just pulling shit out of my ass basically of what I think, what the physical item of uh, sweets hearts is. But sweets hearts, when you think about it, is like you know think about like Valentine. You had a little heart shaped box full of chocolates, or it could be the actual you know like little box of sweethearts, like little candy sweethearts. It could be that. That would make sense because that's isn't that what they're actually called like sweethearts huh okay i don't know why you would eat that with tea but sure chocolate would make more sense or like a wafer or like a cookie or something like that もっと今がこの半熟卵みたいな曖昧な生活が続けばいいと思ったでしょ? you don't want it to end you wish this half-baked, uncertain life could go on forever, don't you? High school is not only three years. I don't know where the fuck they be doing over there in Japan. <laughs> not here in America. Why is high school only three years? Yeah, we have like, what, four? Tenth? Eleventh? No, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth? I know for the, I know, I know some schools, like, ninth grade is a little, like... It teeters on the edge of being either high school or middle school. It could be both. But I know for me, ninth grade was considered high school. Freshman year. Uh, yeah, Why did I waste so much time? Why wasn't I honest about my feelings? I'm retarded. Sorry, it, it forget, it's an egg. I forgot about that. Why did you forget? Yeah, it's an egg. It's an egg pudding. I'm dumb. Come. Take that whole segment I just said. Throw it out the window. I forgot it was a, it was an egg. I forgot it was a, it was a pudding egg. I completely forgot about that. They even showed it in the things too. I don't know what my mind. <laughs> I, it's because it's like, it was like so like early in the story that we know when the thing starts that they actually say oh yeah it's like a, it's a little it's a little pudding egg i don't know why that didn't stick with my brain so again take that whole analogy of me saying it's chocolate or cookie and shit like that and just just throw it out the window i forgot it's a, it's a pudding cup it's basically a, it's pudding i forgot it's pudding where sojiro got that i still have no clue that's the one thing they haven't really answered yet all those things, I can make all your woes go away. I'm Sweetsheart's. The boy kickshaw prayer for girls in the prime of their youth only. What do you say? Like, that's a pretty cool design. It's like a... Not like Jester. I almost, almost has like that, but it's a very regal. I, I, I kind of don't fuck with the colors, though. But it makes sense. It's like a gold and burgundy, which is like, you know, uh, like royal colors and shit like that. It's a cool design for Kamari, especially for like such a side character like Kamari. Thanks, but no thanks. I don't care what you can do, and I don't care what happened. 
No time to reset. I'm done talking to you. Time's up. You're finished. Wait, I can only be used by someone who's who has unrequited at the end of the day. Get lost. Suzuki is the killer. I'm the user. Kojika Kumari. What? Seriously? That's so unmaidenly. There wasn't anything left to wish for. Not that Tsukiji was dead. It'd be cool if we actually get to see how everybody else died. Well, I guess they got technically they got murdered, so. I woke up to find myself on a wooden floor. What am I doing here? I slowly picked myself up. This was the hall of the Kuonji estate. The grandfather clock told me it was almost seven in the morning. At the edge of the foyer was a woman dressed like a nun, collapsed on the floor like me. Oh, she was just asleep. Oh, I guess Yuka is no longer in her, uh, her statured state. <laughs> the mansion was quiet, but I could hear several noises if I strained my ears. There was the clinking of kitchenware, footsteps on the corridors, old doors creaking, and... Huh? Hey, what's going on here? What are we doing sleeping at Kuonji's place? Hey, wake up, Kanomi. Get your head on straight. A familiar voice echoed from the second floor. Okay, so... Because it says here, everything that she... Everything happened the way she decided. So it wasn't Tokisu's birthday, she just wished that it was? That way she could have everybody around and then just murder them? <laughs> that would make sense for... Toby Morrow's uh, exclamation there. I'm being like, what the hell are we doing here? I don't remember being here. Because she gathered everybody up there. Okay. Somehow, the tightness in my chest lightened, and I stood up. To be honest, I was relieved. I glanced down, and saw something like an eggshell in a note. There were just a few words on the note, scribbled in pink crayon. Why not just live for love? Huh? Huh? Stupid sweets brains. Even after you're dead, you're still a pain in the ass. Wait, I thought she didn't... I thought she would lose the memories of that whole thing. Besides, I was too passive to do that. It's how I fell for your trap to begin with. Well, duh. The Queen of Hearts. Yeah, I, I don't know what... I'm over here speculating that's a fuck... <laughs> that was like a fucking... Oh, you're speculating that's like a fucking uh that it's just like a fucking uh a what's it called like a like chocolate and sh I forgot it was an egg I legit forgot it was an egg it was a pudding egg a egg, little a thing of pudding shaped like an egg I forgot about that but it does look mad tasty or Latino we call that flan here in my household but well duh Sweetheart's tone was lively yet strangely encouraging Cracks began forming in the eggshell, and then it crumbled. Taking everything, even my memories with it. Okay, there it is. Huh? I felt like it was right in the middle of something. I picked up the note in front of me and frowned at it. Irritated by the presumptuous, obnoxious scribbling, I crumpled it up, and after a moment's hesitation, I stowed it in my pocket. Oh, Kumari. You're here too? 
どうなってんだこりゃパーティーの開始午前中に変更したのか What's going on? Did they move up the party? Okay, so she was there. Move up the party. What does that mean? There was a commotion coming from the stairs. Plus, the face of a guy I hadn't heard was coming. I quickly turned away and checked myself in a nearby mirror. Good. Nothing too out of place. <laughs> That's what I like to know. Is Ms. Kuonji's birthday really today? The date on the invitation could have been wrong. Wait. Huh? Oh, okay. I think I'm slowly getting. Okay, so when she activated Sweet's Hearts, she basically moved the party to the day that. Or to the day that she showed up、uh, early, like the day earlier, instead of like the actual, like, say, like Friday or something. Like, like, like if we're looking at the term of like a long, like, to me, a long weekend is Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So she probably showed up, like, like say Thursday and stuff like that. Um, yeah, she's like, she like, so she basically like showed up Thursday and, and shit like that. And, uh, And after she ate that, it basically like moved everything to that day instead of, you know, Friday, like a normal. Like, weekend party would be, especially for like a three day one. Where was this deja vu coming from? It must have been my imagination. It was awfully rare to have a birthday party out in the Kuonji estate. Our high school days were numbered. The season would be over before we knew it. I had to make sure I finished, with, it, finished it with no regrets. Whoa, Kojika? You were invited too? アリスちゃんと面識あったのかよ。Do you know us? そりゃあるわよ。青崎と友達やってれば。てか少しは落ち着け、ホウスケ。あんたガキの頃から成長ないんだから。Anyone who's friends with Aozaki knows her. Anyway, simmer down, ホウスケ。You ever thought about growing up? ほうほう、さすが幼馴染み。仲がいいことで。Hey. It's good to see childhood friends getting along. So, no choice, the Kinomi or Shitskete are a Okumari. Mawarito, Nani or your Hunin, no Tamini Narze. You should coach him, Kumari.、Uh, you'd be helping him and everyone around him, too. Ya Oks Marita de Okotoari, Rodo to Hosu got to the Awanaishi. What does she muda bone out there? She can't nice. こいつ叩いても叩いても元通りになる形状記憶合金だし。No way. No amount of money would be worth that much effort. I may as well bang my head against the wall. No matter how many times you smack him, he won't change. <笑>ちげえね。じゃあまあ、こいつはほっといて。クオンジに挨拶に行くか。青崎とクオンジは今かね。<笑> I guess you're right. In that case. Let's leave him and go say hi to Kuonji. She's probably in the drawing room with Aozaki. Hey, wait, before you go, there's a nun on the floor over there, Your Highness. <laughs> Maybe I could get her to her feet and be a hero. Or be her hero. Go <laughs>、yeah. oh, ahead. All she'll do is knock you out, at worst. Sukichi sounded like he was enjoying himself. His voice carried through the hall. Dust particles fitted in the air, or flitted in the air, appearing and disappearing in the rays coming through the sunlight. Hmm. I guess this could have ended worse. An only cheery voice summed up her honest thoughts. The mad rap said he drew to a close. She smiled in her own way, each to their own. Everyone had a choice to lament the little time one had left, or to gamble on it. Perhaps we find things beautiful because they don't last. Someday, this would all end, but not just yet. 
This jolly tale was simply another book to add to the shelf. Youth is both fleeting and never-ending. The stories of young boys and girls are full of hardships yet unseen. Which means, my friends, we shall no doubt meet again. I missed it. I'm assuming that's it. That's it. That's the end. Hey, there we go. The Kowonji Estate. Anyone can sleep but not laugh. Oh, can I skip this? The <laughs> Detective. Kajika uh, Kumari heroine. That's funny. Sacrifice told you. Sleeping Beauty. Leaves unexpectedly. <laughs> Gone like the wind. Bomb victim. Damn. Stormy Night tragedy. Sentence, sentence to tickling via electric chair. Oh, that was her thing? Hold on. Oh, can I pause that? I want to pause that. No. Died happy. Flower explosion. Fluffy form. You know, acute alcohol poisoning. Myocardial infraction. A heart attack, essentially. Cosmo murderer. Don't know what that is. All right. I think we could just skip this. Perfect. All right. There we go, man. Fin. Finito. Finished. We have finally got the true ending for anyone can sleep but not laugh. So that's going to be it for there. We got the culprit is here. Let's look at that real quick. Ooh, nice, beautiful gold. So that's going to be it for me, you guys. Uh, at least the live version of me. Now you guys will be seeing me going for the bad ending. So with that being said, it has been your boy White Album. I will see you guys next time when I do start the wonderful water ploys. I'll see you guys next time. Got the first bad ending. This one is I should just go home. Maybe I should just go home. Thank you for a zuto hisama mark that the money. Weather forecast said it'd be sunny. Hmm. Hombri ni natta ra kari wa taihen ka mo. Hora, yama no naka hodo made shika agatte konai de shou. Taxi. Hold on. Oh, oh. Don't auto. I don't auto. I don't want auto. Oh, there we go. Oh, I forgot I had that on. Ritsuko was right. If you really wanted to head home, uh, you had to be ready to be soaked to the bone. Thinking about it, I can't believe Ozaki stuck out to the stuck out the commute to to and from school for over two years. I was impressed. Huh? What's up, Kojika? Isn't everyone in the drawing room? いえ、部屋に忘れ物があるんです。お、あ、あ、ちょっとプロカスタンテナマルーム。皆さん、先に行っていてください。皆さん、先に行っていてください。皆さん、先に行っていてください。皆さん、先に行っていてください。皆さん
ちゃんと下に向かってたわよね。私。That's weird. I'm sure I was heading down the,、uh, down the hill. I thought aloud to try and ease my tension. Wait, what was that? A shadow in the shade of the trees. It looked human. Dare? Is someone there? My voice rang out. No response. It was getting dark out. There wasn't even a breeze. Now I remembered why I wanted to go home. Yeah. I had a feeling that something bad was about to happen, would, would be happening if I stayed.、Oh. Something impossible unfolded before my eyes. I felt a sudden shock in my stomach. Reflexively, I brought my hand to my mouth. Too late. I fell to the ground. Warm blood flowed out of me, along with my strength. My hands helplessly reached to the sky for help. It took the last of my strength, but I managed to catch sight of the shadow. That's pretty cool. It's,、um, it's a combination of both her voice and Suzuki's. That's pretty sick. Now, now, that won't do. Don't finish this before we've even started. Damn. Slice her down. Something axe shaped came swinging down. Probably an axe. I don't, I don't know. The last words I ever heard came from someone with the face of a monster. Alright, that's bad ending one. There we go. I think, I think I've already got this one, so. But、we'll, I'll just go through it quickly. Decision L. We should stay in our rooms until morning. Yeah, if I remember, I think I got this one. Accidentally. I say accidentally, but in, in a previous video.、Uh, so I'll kind of just skip a bit of this just so we can see it. Just so I can see it. Thick red liquid like paint.、Oh. Yeah, oh, man, I fucking knew it was Suzuki too. Two eyes flashed in the darkness. Light glinted off the weapon in their hands. Their face was unworldly, twisted, demonic. It was the last thing I've ever saw. Yeah, so. Yeah, we've we seen that one. We've seen that one. Right, decision at end. We have to pick. I agree. I agree. This is the best option we had. I think this is a. I think this is the exact same ending, if I remember correctly. I'm just gonna. Oh, yeah, it's the exact same ending. It's the exact same ending. That's weird that they have the two exact same endings for two different options. Last thing I ever saw. Okay, so there we go. Decision P. This is for bad ending four. I think we've seen this one. Yeah, because when we follow her, she laughs and she fucking, like, apparently she goes, like, flying across the, the yard into the house or some shit like that. I think it was too dangerous to leave Ozaki alone. I'll go with you. Don't do that. It's dangerous. Sure, whatever. Watch her back. Watch my back. Watch her words. Suspicious survivor. Good idea not to let her go. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. I'll just give a good head of this. Ozaki stopped. See the light. What light? I opened my eyes. Pause before speaking. Had to kill her. She runs off. Yep. Yeah, so we've seen this one. We've seen this one. Then she laughs. Oh, crap. <laughs> Did I just fall for that, Kuma? Yeah. We to one side, like she was hit by, 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 yeah, we still, we seen that one, we seen that one. Because I think we try to run back and she gets like stabbed, right? Oh no, she just runs into the forest, yeah. Yeah, pretty good runner, yeah. Huh? I felt like I was floating. My feet kicked wildly in the air. Wait, what? I seem to be falling backward. Each breath sent a painful spasm through my back. I reached for my back. Something. Was wrong and touched something wet. The rain, probably. I timidly look at my hand. As much I hated to admit it, my hand was strawberry red. I licked it. Yep. Tastes like iron. I've lost over a liter of blood and only kept flowing. That was. Damn. Thin blood? Okay. I can't believe this. Horrifying reality stopped me from finishing my sentence. Something was coming this way. At this point, I didn't really care. Would I sleep forever or be captured by the killer? Either way, apparently, this was how my night would end. Yeah, so we, I've seen that one already. We, I got that one in video. 
All right, here we go. Decision R. I have to pick. I can rest easy now. That's one I don't think I see. Ooh. That's a. Uh, that's definitely brand new. It's in red text. I can rest easy, or I could rest easy now. I returned to my room, alone. Even with Alzaki in confinement, we still had to stay on guard. I locked the door to my room and laid down on my bed. All that was left to do was wait for morning. So much had happened, but at least I could finally fall asleep without worrying. <sighs> Woo! God, if you're listening, make everything go back to how it was by the time I wake up. Not in this ending. <laughs> Not in this ending, partner. I woke up to the sound of birds chirping. Oh, okay, so it's this ending. Wrinkled. Uh, yeah, so. Yes, yeah, so a lot of the endings are just recycled. Actually, I think I've seen this one. Yeah, because we go down to see Alzaki and she's fucking dead. Clean and tidy. Bobby clean and tidy. Ritsuka's room. Anyone a lot of it there? Yeah. Okay, so so yeah, we've seen this ending before. We've seen this ending. Yeah, because this is the one that I kinda, I kinda got like stuck on in the last video. Let's go see Alzaki. And yeah, she's dead. Beautiful long hair. Yeah, so we, we've seen this ending. We've seen this ending. Trapped, and that's it. That's the nah. bad end. The footsteps of my death. Yeah, so cool. All right, here we go. Decision T. No helping again. This we've already seen this one too again. So, so I'll just uh, run through it because this is where we see uh, Alien Tsukiji. <laughs> Oh, no, it's the same one. Okay. This one, a decision you. All right. This one should keep running until morning. This one we've already seen again. Okay. Well, so we've seen this one. So I'll just, I'll just quickly go through it. Mm, bam, bam, bam. Congratulations on killing it. Yeah, we've seen that. Decision one. you. So this one we've already seen. So this one, again, we've already seen because it says here to choose any character. So basically, if you choose all the wrong options of the playthrough, so we're just gonna go with we'll go with Ari, I guess. So yeah, it's the same ending. We got this one. So we we've, we've seen this one with every bad bad. We got this with every character. So it's time to go to the the final ending here. The 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 bad ending nine. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. The final bad ending. Uh, this one's actually kind of crazy because it says here you have to do the entire true ending playthrough. And then you have to pick Miss Kawunji's and Nefer. That's kind of crazy. That's kind of, that's also kind of fucked up. Imagine you didn't save and you get to this decision. It's like, hey, guess what? We got to do that all over again. <laughs> so here we go. Is Miss Kawunji a neat freak? So this is the final bad decision. This should net me my trophy. The legendary detective Kumari. Here we go. This wasn't working. I couldn't think straight. At this rate, i never figure out who the killer was. If I couldn't use my head, I had to rely on my legs and get out of here. The game would end if I could if I could just keep getting oh, what? keep from getting caught until sunrise. As long as I survived, Sweethearts wouldn't win. The storm was over. If I could just make it to the city, everything would go back to normal. Uso. No way. I've been heading downhill all this time. How am I at the back of the mansion? I've been heading downhill all this time, so how did I end up in the back of the mansion? Ah, the ground distorted. My senses went haywire. I must have done something wrong. Suddenly, a, wi a voice whispers in my ear. Congratulations on killing everyone. It was a voice of terror that I've never heard before. Yet yeah, it sounded so familiar. 
Okay, well, that's actually an ending we got, but there we go, man. Legendary Detective Kumari. Fucking finally, man. <laughs> finally, finally. That's all the bad decisions, man. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We can finally put this damn story to rest. <laughs> let's go, man. Let's go.